This is a full frame camera. It gives me top of the line image quality, but it's really quite cumbersome. It's heavy and it's large. But what if I could build out the smallest full frame camera setup I could, maintaining top of the line image quality, but without the unnecessary size and weight? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did just that. I started with the Sony ZV-E1. It's one of the smallest full frame cameras ever made. It's a real pocket sized powerhouse. But even then, I have a bunch of heavy lenses that would get in the way of minimizing my setup. So, I bought this. It's the Samyang 35mm f2.8 and when paired with the camera it becomes quite frankly the smallest most powerful full frame setup I've ever seen. But wait, why is this lens so special? This lens is interesting because there are two types of lenses that exist. You have zoom lenses and you have prime lenses. Zoom lenses are normally larger, they need space for things like the moving elements and they're also normally slower, they don't have as wide an aperture and so you can't get that really shallow depth of field. The second is prime lenses. These ones don't zoom, and so you have to move in and out with your feet in order to adjust the composition. They're normally a little bit smaller, and they're also faster. You can get that shallow depth of field, which you'll see when you buy one, it's an f2 or f1.4. But what if a company focused on making a prime lens, so it doesn't zoom, and a prime lens that wasn't fast, so no shallow depth of field? Well, what would happen then is you get an incredibly small and compact lens like this. Quite possibly the smallest autofocus lens for Sony FE mount. And that is exactly what I was looking for. So in order to test it out, let's take it on a hike in the muddy English countryside. And I can show you some shots they got with it along the way. So what do I like about this lens? Well, firstly, let's start with the f2.8 aperture. It actually gives surprisingly good depth of field with a full frame sensor, and I've been surprisingly impressed. Some of the portraits that come out of this lens don't look as if they're shot on something particularly slow, and I really like the rendering. You can get some good background separation as long as you maneuver your subject appropriately. And overall, I've managed to get some really pleasing results taking photos of people when I've needed to. feature I wanted to talk about is the autofocus. Now, Sony's autofocus is leagues above anything else that I have tried, but I was a little bit worried because this isn't a native lens, so I didn't know how it was going to stack up, but I'm pleased to say that it works absolutely seamlessly. It is perfect, it tracks people's face and eyes absolutely perfectly, and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. It's fast, accurate and reliable, which is everything that you could hope for. Next thing I want to talk about is lens sharpness. Now this thing is surprisingly sharp. I personally think that lens sharpness is completely overrated anyway. Most digital cameras and modern day lenses are gonna give you a totally usable image. But I was surprised at how good this was. I was shooting on a 12 megapixel sensor that's in the ZV-E1 for photos and it still looked great, along with all my videos, which looked tack sharp with lovely rendering with the great video that comes straight out of this camera. It almost felt like a point and shoot. I could just point out something, press record or take a photo and I didn't have to think about it at all. Going in. Hello? <laughs> we got a car coming southbound. One final thing that I am taking as a massive positive as well is this funny lens hood that it has. You can see here that this whole front thing detaches and it's just one big piece that you can attach lens filters to. Now you can also put a lens filter on this 
and it can be even smaller. But what I like about this is that I have a black pro mist filter and a variable ND filter attached to the front. So if I'm using video, I can use it like that to adjust my exposure. But if I wanna take a photo, I just go like that and it's removed all of the different lens filters that I had attached. And I can take a normal photo with no ND effect. And I don't have to bump up my ASO. So. so it's really quite brilliant. It's also a bit of a funny size because you need to buy a 49 millimeter filter for this part here on the actual lens. And then this one is a rather strange 40.5 millimeter. I found that despite me at first being a little bit worried, they're actually plentily available online and also really cheap because they're so small. So a massive thumbs up for this funny looking system from me. let's talk about the negatives. The funny thing is that I can only really think of two negatives of this lens. One is that it doesn't zoom, but if it was gonna zoom, it would be much bigger. So I really wouldn't want that. The other one is that it has an f2.8 aperture. Now the issue with an f2.8 aperture is normally you wouldn't be able to get a good shallow depth of field. But with a full frame sensor, it's not that much of an issue. And if positioned correctly, you can get really nice background separation. The other negative of having an f2.8 aperture is when going into a low light situation. If I could open up my lens wider, I don't have to use such a high ASO when I'm shooting in low light. The thing with this though, is that the higher ISOs on the Sony cameras are so clean that I don't really need to worry about that. So I can go into a lower light situation with this lens and not feel too pressed about it. Now it's not gonna do wonders and I'm not gonna be able to shoot in pitch black, but it's pretty nice to not have to worry about something like today where there's not much light at all and it's a super cloudy day. And instead I can stick this on and I won't have to worry at all. Honestly, if I owned a Sony FE mount camera, I would have a hard time justifying not buying this lens. It's a really good price. It is really compact. It's relatively sharp. It does the job and it turns my camera into something that is so pocketable and so lightweight that I can take this with me everywhere and not have to worry about it. In some respects, it's almost like a mini Fuji X100VI, but without all the hype and performs a little bit better at taking videos. I've shot many of the videos on this YouTube channel with this exact setup, and it looks very similar to a much more expensive lens. The only difference being, it has a little bit less blocky. So that's it for this week's video. Is this the smallest, most compact, most powerful full frame setup that I could think of putting together in 2024? Yeah, pretty much. And I'm very happy with it. 